all right we are going to work on the level 2 of buffer overflow attack today this is the buffer overflow attack without knowing the buffer size or task 4 if you need help with task 3 or the regular buffer overflow attack please check the description below i'm getting the lab set of files now i'll show you how to get a successful attack and not a lot of why we are doing things please check the textbook if you wanna know about more of the conceptual stuff I have listed all the commands that I'm gonna need on the left hand side on the screen I'll also include those commands in the video description so we are gonna work on the task 4 of this lab so buffer overflow attack where we have only an idea about a range of the buffer size so in this example uh, the buffer size is set within 100 to 200 bytes that's all we know now the upper limit is what you should pay attention to so for us this is 200 bytes if your instructor has given you a different value you'll have to change your numbers accordingly i'll tell you how to do that all right so i'm ex extracting the lab set of files and go inside code and open our terminal here Now the first thing that we have to do is we have to disable two countermeasures against buffer overflow attack. The first one is address space randomization. And the second command is used to link to the Z shell instead of the default bash or dash. All done. So we are done with disabling the countermeasure and we are ready to start working on the attack. Now these are the four files that we have by default within the lab set of files. We need to create an empty bad file first. So this is very important. Otherwise, if you try to run the debugger, your debugger will not work or produce incorrect results. So make sure you have an empty bad file in your directory you can see the file size is zero now the next thing what we do is we run make and it will automatically generate all the executable files needed for the lab so it generates file for all four levels because we are working on level two you can see we have the level two of that program and also the commands have already converted the program to a set uid file so we don't need to basically do anything now again if your instructor has given you a different value you will need to make changes inside the make file i'm using the default values here so we'll start to run our debugger on the stack l2 dbg file And inside that, first create a breakpoint at BOF, run, and next. You should see the string copy function now. So that's the function where we have a buffer overflow. At this point, we are going to print the beginning of the buffer address. now like task 3 or the previous attack do not print ebp because you are not supposed to know the ebp value the only thing that we get from the debugger is the beginning of the buffer address and we are ready to start constructing our exploit.py file or the bat file now at this point our bat file is empty so we want to create our payload so let's open our exploit.py file now this py file is given to us for the level 1 attack we'll have to make changes inside this file uh, so that it works for level 2 now as you can see we have to change the shell code you could get the shell code from the lab instructions or you could get it from here so if you go inside the shell code directory and this c file 
there are two shell codes the first one is for 64 bit and then the next one this is for 32 bit so we are going to copy the 32 bit version and then replace that within exploit.py awesome okay Now what we have to do is uh, change the other parts so you can see in line 11 and 12 what's happening right there is the bat file is being filled up with no op instructions that means no operation instructions you can read the description in the textbook basically they don't do anything they will uh, take us to the point where we want to go so no, no nothing to change over there now instead of putting the shell code in a diff, uh, that start location what we are going to do is we will try to put the shell code at the end of our bad file so that's what we are doing here i'll also add a comment right here so put the shell code at the end of our bad file so as you can see in the diagram on the right hand side we are putting the shell code at the end of our bad file now the next thing that we have to do is we have to figure out a return address. So a return address is going to take us to somewhere in that NOP region. So we have to jump high enough so that we can go inside that NOP. Now we know that the buffer size is about 200, 100 to 200 bytes long. So as I said the 200 byte, the higher cap is what ma matters. So this is our beginning of the buffer address so try to jump higher than 200 so let's start with maybe 300 bytes so i'm gonna start with 300 so beginning of the buffer plus 300 now the next thing that we have to do is we have to spray the buffer so previously what we did using that offset value in our level one attack was just had we had one return address but this time because we don't know exactly how long our buffer is we have to spray the buffer that means we have to put the return address in many places so that at least one of those addresses is the actual return address so that's what we do here so we are going to create a for loop and spray the entire buffer with our return address now the range value because uh, we have been told that the buffer is between 100 and 200 byte so 200 divided by 4 bytes which is uh, 4 bytes is each address is 4 bytes long for 32 bit so for 200 divided by 4 is 50 that's why we wrote range 50 and then we simply modify that content so offset multiplied by L or 4 for 32 bit so that we can put the return address across the entire buffer size and that's all so after you are done save the exploit.py file and we are ready to generate our bad file so dot slash exploit.py oh I missed a colon I see okay so let's go ahead and fix that issue so there should be a colon after the for loop save it all right now let's check the files now as you can see the bat file is now 517 bytes long so let's try and see if the attack works oh okay so illegal instruction so what that means is we haven't jumped high enough so maybe we have like jumped somewhere below the where we wanted to so we maybe we can increase the return address to plus 400 so we want to be in that nop region okay so let's try again so create another bad file fantastic okay we got the root shell now you can type in id to make sure that you got the root shell uh, or who am I 
Now that's all for today. We have a successful attack. I'm gonna upload more seed lab based video. Please like and subscribe if you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.